It's a great privilege that we have uh, Baba with us and Acharya Ji. Probably there is nobody in the country who doesn't know about our Ramdev, we will leave him alone. But uh, what Acharya Ji has created in this country, in the form of this Patanjali brand, in a matter of just about probably twelve years or fifteen, thirteen years, it's become one of the biggest brands in the country, bringing a totally new dimension to India's business. Over two billion dollar business and uh, see, he's the CEO, look at him <laughs> CEO without salary. So, CEO without salary, CEO without suit, without jacket and without tie. This is a… an exemplary model of a desi company, an Indian company really doing well. It is something that the business community in the world, particularly in India, has to learn that with such simplicity but with absolute devotion towards what you're creating, what can be created is so phenomenal. In this FMCG arena where they are, as far as I know, I don't think no company in the country in a matter of ten, twelve years' time has become a two billion dollar company as they have become and they have the largest food processing industry in the world. Everybody knows these things, but what people do not know is, uh, I had the privilege of uh, visiting their lab, what they're creating there. They have kind of documented seventy-two thousand medicinal plants, which has never been done before in a most scientific manner. All this, uh, look at the simplicity, one man is shirtless, another man <laughs> like this. <laughs> this man is uh, production and execution, this man is marketing. This is something that India has to learn from. I've been speaking about this, but these are exemplary models of that, that to run major businesses, you don't have to strangle yourself with a tie. What you're seeing here, I believe, is the future of India's business houses. <laughs> I'm taking the liberty of inviting uh, Acharya Balakrishna Ji. This year it's all fixed up, but 2019, the Insight, which is a business meet, where we have had people like Ratan Tata, Narayan Murthy, KB Kamat, and many, many others. Uh, almost all the top corporate leaders have been here. Next year, he's coming here as the corporate leader of this nation. When I first heard about you many years ago, I, I rolled my eyes and, <laughs> and I muttered something about uh, guru types. <laughs> and until few, few uh, uh, months ago, when my sister gave me your book, Inner Engineering, which happens to be New York Times, bestseller. Um, it changed my perspective. And honestly, if it wasn't New York Times bestseller book, I would have not read it. What, what is it about the West, <laughs> this West stem that we can't do without it? I mean, there are so many books and if, unless Americans don't approve of it, it just doesn't make sense. Why is that? So we've still not gotten out of that Firang syndrome. Uh, it has to come from there. Today, why do you think so many people are talking about yoga? The yoga they're talking about in India is… is largely a rebound from the American coast. They're not talking about the yoga that is here. This is the source of yoga. That brings to me a question about um, our… our roots ingrained in yoga and spirituality. But where has it got us as a nation, as a country, as a continent? But let's understand this very clearly. 
Here we always focused on individual development because without creating great human beings, there is no great nation, there is no great culture, there is no great world. World, nation, society, these are just words, it's just you and me. What kind of people we are, that's the kind of society, that's the kind of nation, that's the kind of world we will live in. So we always focused on individual development. In this we produce still our human beings, absolutely fantastic human beings for thousands of years who created a fantastic culture. Sadhguru, uh, these days the, the common discussion which is going on is again about the, the refugees. They are coming in millions and millions and millions where our own are starving. We are trying to project our inefficiency as compassion, I don't like that. We don't know how to man our borders but we are talking about compassion, that's not the truth. When somebody comes to the nation's door because they are violently persecuted somewhere, we should treat it differently. After all, they are human beings. But for economic well-being, people are daily porous borders, people are going across here and there, we need to do something about it. But if you just allow people and give them ration cards and identity cards simply without any accounting, this is going to be a disaster. This will lead to all kinds of problems in future. You cannot run a nation without knowing who is in this country. If yeah, you want to be right. really inclusive, we can make the two countries into one. <laughs> yes, we can make uh, Bangladesh into a union territory and make it a part of this country. If you're ready for that, I, I think India is ready for that. If you talk about inclusiveness, that's a way to include, isn't it? Not slipping into my house from the back door and saying, include me, it's not going to work <laughs> Okay, now we'll move to your favorite topic. What is that? <laughs> I she didn't know you figured out all those things <laughs> Okay, now, now we move to Shiva. Oh. So, so, uh, so Shiva is what I got from reading about it and doing my practices and spending time with you. Shiva is not somebody looking, like sitting up there and looking at all of us. Shiva is a dimension. It is, it is what they say in science, a black hole where nothingness seems to be the origin of universe. But, uh, okay, tell me that, that so Adi Yogi, the very first yogi was somebody who who had access, who has access to that dimension. So why is it that you are obsessed with Adi Yogi? Isn't it like being, uh, making it about the <laughs> container and not the contained? Sadhguru, isn't it like that? Till now I have not said a word about him, you brought him. <laughs> no, but you, you've made the sculpture of Adi Yogi and you… Yeah, it's only one and a half years old, but you, you're not checking what I was doing this thirty-six years. Let's come to that, that's fine. See about Adi Yogi is not an obsession or the Adi Yogi is a plan. You talked about nothing. If you want to understand nothing, you must put a hyphen between no and thing. It's not a thing. That doesn't mean it does not exist. Now science is talking about no things. That means non-physical dimension of existence, something that is not a thing but still a powerful force. The source of all that exists here as physical stuff essentially comes from that which is not a thing or no thing or Shiva. So my last question is Sadhguru that uh, about our youth, uh, apparently the statistics say that every one hour, actually less than an hour, a uh, young person below twenty-five is committing suicide. Uh, why is that? Suicide is not uh, a pleasant thing. You must look at what psychologically that person goes through to come to the decision. It's the most horrible part of one's life where somewhere they feel so trapped either by physical situations, financial situations or emotional situations, so absolutely trapped when there is no other way. This is when they take that kind of violent exit which you call a suicide. Why is this happening? You must understand in this country in 2017, 7,600 children below fifteen years of age have committed suicide. Below fifteen years of age, when they must be bursting with life and wanting to live, 
Below fifteen years of age, if they want to commit suicide, what is it? We are somewhere driving ourselves to a certain desperation. One big cause for all this is education system. So youth means an exuberant energy. But most of the time the problem with the youth is they don't have the necessary clarity nor balance. We are launching a campaign called Youth and Truth in the month of September. We are doing events across the country in various universities. We expect you and all your friends in the, in the industry and in the media, please be a part of it. Such a large youthful population without necessary clarity, without competence, without balance, they could be the biggest disaster on the planet. But if we organize this well, we could be the greatest miracle in the world. My message to all the youth who are going to participate in, uh, in this, you can ask uh, Sadhguru all kind of questions, why uh, about monthly cycles, about sex, drugs, all the scandalous I questions. Okay, this is so. being uh, pitched as uh, youth and truth, unplug with Sadhguru, ask whatever you want. Ask whatever Nothing you want. Nothing is a taboo.